So the House, they just had a, a, a vote on the House floor about replenishing Israel's Iron Dome, right? They want to give Israel $1 billion in addition to what they already give Israel every year, the $3.8 billion, uh, because Israel needs to replenish its Iron Dome. Uh, you know, this is basically its um, surface-to-air missile defense system to shoot down rockets, uh, short-range to medium-range rockets, right? And then they also have... Um, I think David Sling, and they have Arrow 1, 2, 3, so they, they, depending on the range of the missiles, they have different systems. Iron Dome is for short range, and they ran out, you see. They need to replenish it, because back in May, as you may recall, when, when they were butchering Palestinians, they ran out of, of their um, defensive uh, rockets, so they need more of them. And the House floor had a vote. And as you can guess, this overwhelmingly passed. I mean, you, you <laughs> as, as soon as I said it, you know that th this passed, right? And what's interesting about this, this vote, okay? Take a look. It passed by 420 to 9. Overwhelming majority. Landslide, slam dunk. Okay, so 420 in Congress, in the U.S. Congress, in favor of replenishing Israel's Iron Dome. Nine were not. Who are these nine? Let's take a look. So, if we see here, there were nine people who voted no. Let's read their names. Bush, Carson, Garcia, okay? Rialva, Masi, Newman, Omar, Presley, Talib. Oh, who's missing from this list? It couldn't be AOC, could it? Oh, yes, turns out she is missing from this list. She voted present, but not at first. As you can see here with Johnson, she voted present, but not at first. Initially, AOC voted no with the rest of the so-called squad, these progressives in Congress. She voted no, and then she switched it to present because voting no, you know, voting against Israel would be too hard, right? So you can see this clip over here. It says, tears on the House floor. AOC appears to be crying as the House passed a $1 billion funding for Israel's Iron Dome. She voted no, then switched her vote to present last minute. Today, on, on House Resident 483 Amendments, he votes nay. For what purpose? Does and as you can see here, um, Nancy Pelosi issued a lovely speech. She says, I thank uh, yada 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 um, because Iron Dome is, you know, she says she wants to express um, her thanks to the floor, you know, to, to further express the will of Congress in a bipartisan way for the security of Israel, right? And she says Iron Dome is a purely defensive system, okay, designed to safeguard all civilians living in Israel. The system was co-developed by the U.S. and Israel and has saved thousands of lives. We will get back to this, okay? So this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Now, just to, to, to cut this short, this is a con. This is a con. This is a trick. This is a game. Okay, what they're playing here, this is a game. And I can prove it to you. Because a few months ago, in July, in July, what happened in July? They were voting whether to give Israel their annual unconditional aid. Right? They, even though it, it was approved by Obama for 10 years, 38 billion over 10 years, every year it has to be approved by Congress, again, nonetheless. Right? This is what happened. Okay, let me pull this up. This is what happened in July. Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, Lee, Bowman, and Jayapal all voted to continue giving Israel unconditional aid. The bill barely got through with 217 votes. Instead of holding it up, they cast the votes it needed to pass. And this is very important, right? Who voted no at the time? AOC. So do you understand what's going on? In July, AOC votes against giving Israel aid because she knows it's going to pass anyway. Because as I just read to you, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, Lee, Bowman, Jayapal made sure that it passes. It passed at 217, barely passing, right? Barely getting through. They made sure it passes. So AOC can, go, can vote no. Doesn't matter. Right? She gets to keep her, her street cred. She gets to, you know, market herself as <laughs> some progressive, whatever, you know, diarrhea, you, you, you want to, uh, verbal diarrhea you want to think of. Today, it's the opposite. 
Today, what happened was the opposite. Ilhan Omar voted no. Okay. Look, let me, let me bring it up to you again. Look here. Ilhan Omar voted no. Ayanna Presley voted no. Rashida Tlaib voted no. Actually, Tlaib, I think, is the only consistent one because she voted no on both. So today they voted no. And AOC was going to vote no, but she didn't. At the last minute, she, she, she couldn't muster the courage to stand up for Palestinians, to stand up for Syrians. She had to go and, and give a present vote. Because this thing is getting through regardless, right? You, you understood, 420 votes, it's going through regardless what AOC votes, regardless what Il Ilhan Omar votes. But when it mattered, when it mattered in July, they made sure it passed. Yes, even Ilhan Omar who was attacked by the Israeli lobby relentlessly. Do you, do you remember how many times they called her anti-Semitic? They tried to ruin her career. E even now, they still call her that. They still call all of them that, even though they voted to give Israel the money, right? This is all theater. So when it matters, they all vote to give Israel the money. And today, when it doesn't matter, they have all vote no. But even AOC couldn't vote no. Oh, man. Oh, man. What a, what a goddamn scam. What a goddamn scam, really. And so, this is not something new. This is not something new, because if you look here, if you look here, um, what Glenn Greenwald posted, okay? He said that while Tlaib, Omar, Bush, and Presley voted no to fund Israel's Iron Dome, arguing they should fund it themselves, AOC voted present, just like she voted present, on Pelosi's $2 billion Ra uh, uh, hike for the Capitol Police, okay? And, and if you go watch Glenn's video, which is marvelous, it's on Rumble, it says two questions for AOC. He talks about this, right? How, how Pelosi wanted to, she wanted to give uh, $2 billion extra to the Capitol Police, and they were all gonna vote no, the squad. But then when they realized that if they vote no, they will sink the bill, AOC voted present, right? And they, they made sure that it got through. Just like what I explained to you with the Israeli funding in, in, in July. The same thing, okay? And again, I can give you another example of this. Take a look. This, when is this? This is back in March. The House bill included the $15 minimum wage. It goes to the Senate. The Senate killed it. Then the Senate sent back the bill to the House without the $15 minimum wage, okay? And the House passed it anyway with a tiny margin of nine votes. Progressives could have put their foot down, but didn't. They allowed it to pass. They allowed it to pass. You see that? It barely got through. AOC votes for it. So AOC says, I support a $15 minimum wage. I support a $15 minimum wage. And the Senate takes the $15 minimum wage out of the bill, hands it to her, and she's like, okay, I'll vote for it. Do you, are you understanding the game here? <laughs> every time there's a shitty bill, every time there's a shitty bill, just enough of them, of the squad, will vote to make sure that it passes, whether it's removing the $15 minimum wage from the omnibus, whether it's giving Israel aid, whether it's the, um, the Capitol Hill police, $2 billion for the Capitol Hill police, just enough of them will vote to make sure that it gets through, and then the others will get to vote no and, and posture and pretend that, you know, like, no, 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 I'm totally against this. I'm, I'm sticking to my principles. And then they take turns, which is why it makes no fucking sense, because in July... Ilhan Omar is voting to give Israel money, and then today she doesn't want to give them Iron Dome money? <laughs> and it's the same thing, by the way, with the $15 minimum wage. So, in, in the House, they had a vote to pass the omnibus without the $15 minimum wage. At, in the beginning, before it went to the Senate, right? They all voted no, right? Like, why, why would we remove the $15 minimum wage? But the Senate removes it and sends it back, and then they vote for it anyway. Oh my god, they, they are... How can people not see this con by now? How can people not realize what's going on? These people are serving the establishment's agenda. They're the best tool that the Democratic Party has. They literally help them pass everything they need to pass. And they take turns doing it, so it's not just one of them which gets all the flack, right? And when they voted for Pelosi as speaker, what happened with that? Same thing like today, right? 
They're doing the roll call. I was watching it live. I reported on it live. They're going through the roll call. Who wants to vote, vote for Pelosi as speaker? She barely got it. Barely got it. Cori Bush, where's Cori Bush? Cori Bush is not here. Oh my God, is she, is she going to sink Pelosi's speakership? AOC is not here. And then at the last minute, they sneak in through the back and they vote for her as speaker. Every single one of them, Bowman, Tlaib, all of them, they fucking voted. They bent the knee and they kissed that ring. These spineless, spineless politicians. And then Glenn, he also points out something else very interesting, which is that AOC shat on Tulsi Gabbard when Tulsi was uh, voting president on Trump's impeachment, right? In 2019. Let me read you the quote. This is a, so this is the headline from New York Post. AOC slams Tulsi Gabbard over present vote on impeachment articles. Okay, and if you scroll down over here, this is what AOC says. Quote, today was very consequential. And to not take a stand one way or another on a day of such great consequence to this country, I think is quite difficult. Okay, we are sent here to lead. And here, uh, Glenn highlights another quote from AOC at the same time. Whenever we have a vote, we should vote yes and we should vote no. Voting present is a very tough position to be in. So AOC is unequivocal. AOC is unequivocal. She says whenever there's a vote, you have to vote yes or no. Okay, so why, why did she go back on her own rule, on her own slogan, on her own dogma for the Capitol uh, Hill police? She voted present. Today, for Israel getting the Iron Dome money, she voted present. That's weird. Why did she shit all over Tulsi Gabbard and then she does the same thing? I think that's what we call hypocrisy. No? But to me, this isn't the greatest hypocrisy. To me, the greatest hypocrisy is that they say... Oh, we are progressives. I'm a progressive. I'm a progressive. <laughs> they pretend to support human rights. They pretend to support Palestine, Palestine and Palestinians uh, right to self-determination and liberation. And then they do shit like this. They vote to give Israel billions of dollars in July. Uh, today, they only vote no because it's symbolic. And even then, AOC can't even, you know, she can't even grow a spine and she has to vote present. You know why she voted present? Because she is a congresswoman from New York. <laughs> you cannot survive as a fucking politician in America, never mind New York, if you don't vote in favor of Israel. Do you understand? So she wants a long career. This, dude, this is politics 101. Everyone knows this shit, okay? In America, you want to be a politician, you have to kiss Israel's ass, especially in New York. And AOC is a congresswoman from New York. She wants a long career in D.C. She wants a long career. She has big ambitions. Okay? So she voted present. Even though it didn't count, she could have easily voted no. And it wouldn't have mattered because the money was going to go through anyway. We know that. 420 to 9. Okay? She only voted no in July because Ilhan Omar, they got her covered. Ayanna Press got her covered. It's like, it's okay. You can go vote no. We're going to pass it anyway. How can people not see this con? I mean, all politics, all politics is performative, all politics is theater. But this, this is especially heinous. How can people not see this shit? What, like, what, what is this? What is so fucking m miraculous about them? This, you should be paying particular attention to this group because they market themselves as socialist. They market themselves as some kind of, you know, leftist wing of the Democratic Party. They're not leftist shit. No, they're helping the Democratic Party continue the same things. Funding Israel, funding the police, you know, ma maintaining the, um, the military budget. Now, what's it been hiked to now? For, uh, $740 billion. It's the same policies. Nothing is changing. They, they never, never stop the bills when they can, right? When they actually have the power to do it, they don't do it. I've just given you multiple examples, and there are still more. I mean, one, one should suffice. One should make you scratch your head and go, hold on, what the fuck is going on here? You said A and now you're doing B? I've given you multiple examples here. They keep going through. And what's funny, what's funny about this, do you know what happened the other day? So the other day is 48 hours ago, right? This is what happened. Oh, you're going to love this. So this was, this was on September 21st, right? The progressives, they actually managed to do something good for once. Right? And I just want to show you, when they did this, I gave them props. 
I gave them props. You see here, I wrote, finally, progressives do something good, using their leverage as a block to cut money to Israel. Well done. This is how you do it, right? So I don't, I don't care who it is. If they do something right or they say something right, I will, uh, I will explain that what they said is right. I'm not going to go and be like, oh, I don't like that person, so I'm going to shit on what they said, even though I actually agree with it or even though it's correct. They did something right. They did something right. Today, they did something wrong. They did something wrong. You got to call it out for how it is. You got to say it for what it is. So what did they do three days ago? They wanted the, uh, so when we're talking about um, the, uh, hold on, I'm, yeah, no, this is the wrong tab. Hold on. Um, there we go. So you can see here, Democrats split over military aid to Israel. Progressives threatened to oppose spending bill if it includes funds for Israel's Iron Dome. So that's what it was. They wanted to, what Nancy Pelosi did, she wanted to, in, you know, she wanted to entice Republicans. She wanted to convince Republicans to vote for this bill. Okay. Um, Republicans, how did she, how did she uh, plan on convincing them? She stuffed the Iron Dome funding inside the bill. She's like, well, you, you all love Israel, right? So of course you'll vote for this if I put it in the bill. <laughs> And Republicans were like, no, we're not voting for it. We don't want to raise the, the, the debt ceiling. Okay? So e even with the Iron Dome funding, they didn't want to vote for it. And progressives, progressives said, well, we're not voting for it either. We're, we're not voting for this bill if you put the Iron Dome funding inside of it. Which, as I said, that's a good thing. That's the correct position. Okay? And so they, ma they managed to do it. Because of the progressives, okay, they were able... To block this from moving forward the republicans were going to vote no and as usual it's down to this tiny progressive block to decide whether this bill advances or whether it's it sinks and here for fucking once they actually grew a spine for once and and as i as i did i congratulated them for it i said this is how you do it okay so jamal bowman he said Pelosi introduced the Iron Dome money at the last minute, as we said, to, to get Republican support. And it didn't work because they, they didn't want to raise the debt ceiling. And this is funny now because the Republicans, who themselves said, no, we're not voting for it, even with the Iron Dome money, are turning around and then calling the squad and progressives anti-Semitic. Hold on a second. You, you just said you're not voting for it either. Aren't, aren't you anti-Semitic by your own definition? You, you also don't want to vote for it, even though it has Iron Dome money. Like, th this is just so insane, right? It's, it's, again, this hilarious, uh, this, this comical bickering between Republican and Democrat as if they are that much different from each other. It's the same shit. They share the same characteristics. It's the same corrupt gang. But anyway, afterwards, they managed to block. I, I will get into the, into, uh, the uh, Iron Dome itself in a second, but I just want to point this out. This is what I wrote at the end. I said, don't worry, though, because ultimately... The Iron Dome money will very likely be moved to the 2022 Defense Appropriations Bill, where it will pass. Israel will get its billions so it can continue illegally occupying Palestine and Syria and killing with impunity. Well, I was, I was half correct because it did get moved, just not to the um, Defense Appropriations Bill. It just got moved much earlier, like three days later. That's it. Because, because as you know, Israel is a huge priority. You can't let Israel wait around. You can wait around. You, the American, you can wait around for health care. You can wait around for COVID relief. You can wait around your whole fucking life to get something from the government, the people who are supposed to represent you. But Israel will not wait three fucking days. They will get their money. They will get their money. Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> Did you see that shit? Three days. Oh, they got it passed. Israel getting them billions. Did you get anything? So, <laughs> I mean, th this is really incredible, right? This is really incredible. So, going back to this article from Roll Call, they say Democrats were deeply divided over whether to include the $1 billion in the continuing resolution or not. Okay? And it worked. They blocked it. Right? They blocked it. But um, today, obviously, when, when it was moved to its own vote, today, three days later, when it was raised on the House floor, where it was brought up on the House floor, are we giving Israel, we meaning the United States, are we giving Israel this um, $1 billion to replenish its Iron Dome? Uh, it was too good to be true, right? 
Those same progressives who blocked it, most of them, they, they stayed on that position. But AOC, she can't sacrifice her career ambitions for Palestinians. I'm sorry, that's, you know, that's how it works. <laughs> of course. When, <laughs> look, man, when push comes to shove, it, it's, uh, it's their asses over any, everyone else's. And uh, AOC is not going to catch flack for Palestinians. You know, when she was actually uh, doing an interview with Glenn in The Intercept in 2018 before she got elected, what was she saying back then? He asked her a very poignant question. It was very smart because you can e immediately tell, um, especially for someone running in New York where they stand. Uh, he asked her what she thought about what Israel was doing at the border, right? The so-called border with Gaza, where they were shooting Palestinians, right? They killed hundreds. They injured thousands at this uh, uh, border fence. And she, she called Israel out on it, right? She said, this is terrible. I'm paraphrasing here, but she, she criticized them heavily, which is refreshing. You never hear that from an American politician, never mind someone running in New York, right? But as you can see today, once she's in power, she has the keys. Ah, now it's a different story. Now it's a different story, right? Like, <laughs> like in the most stereotypical fashion of every politician, Whoever existed, they say one thing and then do another. They're complete fucking liars. And so this is not just AOC, this is all of them. As I mentioned, they take turns. July, Ilhan Omar, even Ilhan Omar is voting to give Israel money. Today she votes no, and AOC takes the, the, takes the flack. They exchange, they take turns. Very smart. Very smart, right? So when we say it's all performative, we mean this, you know? First of all, AOC, what does she do? She does the Medicare for all mask, you know? Oh, let's not, let's not force a vote or do something. I don't care if you force the vote or not. D let's do something to, you know, something to, to get Medicare for all passed. No, let's make a mask instead. Are we going to tax the rich? No, we're just going to make a dress out of it. So who knows, guys? You know, maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. And now AOC will release a tank that says Free Palestine or something like that. You know, don't expect too much. Just performative things. <laughs> Just performative things. And it's really funny that, that uh, people think that AOC was crying. If you go and read some comments, which I, I don't advise you to do, but uh, for, you know, for your mental well-being. Uh, people, some people think that she was crying in this video today on the House floor because Israel got the money. That was a performance. That's, that's an absolute performance. These are crocodile tears. It's just like when she's going to the border. You remember the, the pictures at the border fence? where she is with the Mexico, the U.S.-Mexico border, and she's crying about the kids in cages. And now that Biden is in power, and he's also putting the kids in cages, and now he wants to... <laughs> you saw the news with Guant Guantanamo Bay looking for a private contractor now. Nothing, not a word. It's all crocodile tears. She's a politician. She's an American politician. Like, grow up, man. Grow up. So, the thing is... The thing is... When we talk about Iron Dome... Uh, you hear a lot of people saying, oh, it's defensive, right? People in the, in the U.S. Congress are saying this, like, of course we should fund this. It's a defensive measure. Well, th that's funny because when you're giving Israel the three billion, you didn't distinguish whether it's going to be defensive or offensive. You know damn well they're going to murder Palestinians with it. And you fucking gave it to them anyway. So, so this idea that they, they care only, they just want to give Israel things to defend itself with is ludicrous because they always give Israel billions every year. And what does Israel do with them? It kills civilians. It kills Palestinians. The, since 2000, since the year 2000, 87% of the victims in Gaza are Palestinian. Okay? The majority of them are civilians. Every time Israel does a ground invasion or an aerial assault, the, the ratio is astronomical. What happened in May? In May, 240 Palestinians killed, almost 2,000 injured, 12 Israelis. I think it was 12 Israelis killed. I mean, this is a bloodbath. It's the same thing. You go look at 2009, 2014. It's always the same thing. The ratio is astronomical. If anyone needs to defend themselves, it's the Palestinians. And since you're saying the Iron Dome is just defensive, why don't you give Palestinians an Iron Dome then if it's just defensive? Are you against Palestinians defending themselves? Why would you say that? You're very benevolent and charitable, giving billions to Israel so they can defend themselves. Give Palestinians billions to defend themselves too. I think they need it, given that they keep getting massacred by Israel. No? 
And so this idea that it's just defensive is, is ludicrous because when you go and you steal someone's land, you invade their country and you put military installations on their land. I don't, I don't care what the function of the military installation is. Yes, an Iron Dome shoots down other rockets. Yes, but it's on someone else's land. If you are an occupying force, you are an aggressor by definition. You invaded someone's country. You are colonizing them and occupying them. Nothing you do is defensive. You are the aggressor. I, so th this idea that the Iron Dome is defensive, they have Iron Dome all over the occupied territories. If I'm not mistaken, they even have some in the Syrian Golan Heights. These are illegally occupied. You're in, this, I don't care what the fuck you install there if you put a sniper or an Iron Dome or uh, an airfield. All of this. Is, is offensive and you are the aggressor. You are an illegal occupier. Nothing you do is defensive by definition. But of course, people are too fucking stupid or they're dishonest. They're too dishonest to explain it that way, right? So they try it again, again. Israel is always the victim. Even though Israelis are not dying, the, the Palestinians are, be, are the ones being massacred. The Palestinians don't even have a, they don't even have a military budget. They don't have a military, nothing. They have nothing, no air force, no navy, nothing. But Israel is still the victim and they need billions of dollars. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable, man. And I mean, just, you know, the American taxpayer, they don't have health care. They don't have free college. They have jack shit compared to other developed countries. Israel gives its people free college and, and free health care and all these nice amenities and basic goods. Why don't Americans have that? If Americans don't have these things and they're forking out, they're forking over billions for Israel, Israel can pay for its own Iron Dome system easily. This is not, you know, uh, uh, in the old days, they'd say, oh, look, they can't, Israel can't do anything. And that's, that's why Israel has been able to, to withstand so long. It's purely because of NATO and U.S. support, right? Israel doesn't need any of that money now. It can easily replenish its own Iron Dome. This is just about... Uh, controlling the United States uh, uh, political apparatus and uh, as much as possible. You know, Israel needs an ally in the U.S. because the U.S. is a permanent seat on the U.N. Security Council. So, you know, if you have a friend with, a veto, with veto power on the U.N. Security Council, very, very, you know, um, favorable and practical to avoid any sort of accountability, right? And so... This idea that it's just defensive is ludicrous. Give Palestinians one, then, if, it, if, it's, if it's defensive. And um, the other day, you know, I saw the uh, Israeli ambassador to the U.S. He was calling AOC anti-Semitic because she wanted to restrict one type of weapon made by Boeing uh, that was used to kill Palestinians in May, just a few months ago, right? So she's not even saying, I want to cut all military funding, all military aid to Israel. Just one weapon, one type of weapon, right? And the Israeli ambassador is calling her anti-Semitic. So there's always a reason to make sure that Israel gets the money. You are either anti-Semitic or, you know, you, you don't want Israel to defend itself. There's always a fucking reason. In the end, Israel gets its money. Right? Always. So I, I don't understand why it's the United States' responsibility to pay for Israel's military. You know, wh why, why doesn't the United States pay for the United Kingdom's military? Why don't they pay for Zimbabwe's military or Switzerland's military or Mongolia's military? Why don't they pay for Sierra Leone's military? Why, why Israel? Why does Israel get $3 billion? Can someone answer that? Why does the U.S. taxpayer have to give them all this money? Right? So, as predicted, here it is. It got passed. This is what U.S. politics is. It's all theater. It's all performance. And they are, there is no left wing. There is no de uh, a socialist wing in the Democratic Party. This is a, sh this is a farce of the highest order. Okay? This facade, this act that they put on of taking turns to, 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 you know, make sure that the bills pass while maintaining their street cred. Oh, man, if you haven't woken up to this, God help you, really. Not, not to mention just the, the hypocrisy of it all, you know, like not, not just contradicting their own votes. One time they vote for something, the next time they don't vote for, vote for it or vice versa. But just their, their principles, their so-called principles, their values, what they ran on. How is any of this in line with what they ran on? It's not just Palestine, as, I, as I've pointed out to you. They chant defund the police and then they vote to give the police $2 billion, right? 
They say, free Palestine, and then they give money to Israel. Yeah? And then they say, $15 minimum wage, and they vote for the bill after the Senate removed the $15 minimum wage. These people are fucking frauds. Period. 